Let me start the story in 1977 as a 10-year-old kid, and that was where I first fell in love with Porsche and first uh, got my taste of what I like to call turbo fever. You know, as a kid growing up in the 70s, early 80s, anywhere in the world, chances are you probably had a uh, Porsche Turbo poster on your wall. I was no exception. So uh, the Porsche 930 Turbo, specifically a White Martini 1977 edition, was the car that I fell in love with Porsche through. Even though I started my collection over 20 years ago, or bought my first Porsche over 20 years ago, I never actually owned a turbo until very, very recently. Basically what's behind me is uh, my dose of turbo fever. You know, I sort of um, finalized my first chapter of Porsche ownership, which was 64 and onwards, and I'm uh, moving forward slightly to the first, uh, first generation of three liter turbos, non-intercooled, 75, six, and seven. So my new goal is to own one of each year, 75, six, and seven of the early non-intercooled, unmolested, original turbos. And what we have behind me are 376s, ironically, and 177. The uh, silver turbo on the far right is the first production US turbo, lifelong California car. The uh, Minerva blue car in the middle with the gold Campagnola rims is a Euro version of a 76 uh, turbo. And then the black uh, turbo behind me is um, the 13th US turbo. So the Ice Green uh, 77, Ice Green Metallic Turbo over there is the first year of uh, power assisted brakes. And uh, that was actually the first noticeable difference that I felt between the four cars was that one actually does stop slightly better. So uh, now I'm on the quest for a 77 930 Turbo, which will be the most difficult one, purely because they were never officially imported into the States. They only made a little over 200, I think 240 of them. And these uh, early turbos were notorious for sort of getting wrapped around a tree very early on in their life. Very few of them have survived unmolested that either didn't get crashed, stolen, stripped, parted out, or chopped up into uh, slant nose wide body conversions with the uh, bigger 3.3 intercooled turbo motors. Prior to owning the turbo, I was a normally aspirated guy all the way through. And a lot of my cars, as you know, are really small displacement motors, two liter, two, 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 four, two, five, two, six, two, seven. And they're really throttle happy, very throttle responsive. Um, the turbo is sort of the complete opposite. There seems to be, you know, no real throttle response. But what I love about them is it's a completely different driving style. You know, the early turbos seem to, uh, at least on paper and interviews you read, seem to have this notorious turbo lag. But by today's standards, you know, these cars when they left the factory 35, six, seven years ago, had an estimated 230, 240 horsepower. You know, they'd be lucky to have that in them today. By today's current standards, that's really not that much power. So it's a challenging drive because you're always trying to modulate when that boost is gonna come on and anticipate when that boost is gonna come on and keep that boost spooled up. So for me the fun is you know in sort of harnessing when that turbo is going to come on. But the biggest um, surprise for me was not turbo lag, it was actually gear ratio. A lot of people don't seem to talk about the tall gear ratios in these early four-speed turbos. You know and I think back then Porsche the factory they didn't want to put a five-speed in because they thought they'd be stripping gears but it's funny how many cars are out there today running uh, a 915 transmission making way more horsepower than these turbos are making. So I think they built a four speed for longevity and uh, it's just strange because first gear is good for at least 50, second gear is good for about 90, third gear is good for about 120 and fourth gear is good for the rest. So in any of my other cars I'm probably in third or fourth gear. In the turbo I'm still in second gear. So the driving experience, you know, I describe these cars as great GT touring cars and they're a great freeway car. You know, you just get on the gas, wait for that boost to come on, you wait, 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 and it's one of those, am I going to pass the car next to me? And then all of a sudden, wallet boost comes on, 
then all of a sudden it's the distance between the car in front of you gets eaten up very, very quickly. So in my other cars, you know, you just sort of roll off the throttle and engine braking sort of slows you down a little bit. In the turbo, you can roll off the throttle, but that boost is still going. So all of a sudden you waited to pass that car, am I going to make it? And then before you know it, you're 200 yards down the road and you're almost about to rear end someone in front of you. So being able to monitor that boost and also the pace and flow of traffic is quite a challenge. So that's where the turbo excels in my experience. You know, it doesn't necessarily excel in this stock format as a uh, weave in and out of traffic, fast through the canyon type of car. In the canyons, you know, the gear ratios seem too tall. You're never fully on boost, even though, you know, left foot braking is a great um, tool to have in the toolkit when it comes to turbos is if you want to sort of reduce speed slightly, left foot brake, grab a little bite in the front end, but keep that boost spooled up. I think we can compare the early cars that we were driving earlier on, my 65, my 66, which are, you know, narrow body, very stealth, very um, slim. Compared to the first generation turbos, all of a sudden the car's aggressive, it's wide, it's got the big whale tail on it, and it's interesting. People really, really respond to the shape of the turbo. It just looks aggressive standing still. You know, on the 376 turbos behind me, what I've done there is I've lowered them considerably and put them on wider rims with uh, Hoosier tires. And it really alters the stance compared to the 77, which is bone stock. Stock ride high on a 205, 225 series tire on a 16 inch rim compared to the silver turbo on the right, which is running a eight and a nine inch with a 225, 275 Hoosier. So to answer your question, there's something really cool looking about a turbo because it looks aggressive, it looks fast, obviously it's unmistakably Porsche turbo and it's an iconic shape. Yeah, my favorite turbo has to be the Silver 76 in the corner for a couple of reasons. One, it's the first turbo I've ever owned. Two, it does appear to be the first production US turbo. It's car number 15 from what I've read, uh, car 11, 12, 13 and 14 were somewhat known as pre-production press demo trade show cars. Car number 11 and car number 14 have been documented. 15 is the third oldest documented surviving car to this day. So to say that car is still in its original format 37 years later to me is pretty impressive. So that is my favorite turbo. It's a lifelong California car. It was delivered to Bob Smith Porsche in Hollywood in 1976. The car actually was made in October of 75. There's an interesting story to all four of these turbos behind us, but the silver one, my buddy Marty had actually worked on the car for the prior two owners. I am the fourth owner. He'd worked on that car for 20 years. The story he tells me and the rumor is it was once originally ordered by Robert Redford, who never took delivery of the car. Whether that story is true or not, I don't know. And then separate of that, it's just a great driving car. I load it, I put it on the wider rims, I refinish re those Fuchs myself with the polished lips, sort of a RSR inspired look. It's got a great stance to it, but it's also got a lot of patina. You know, the car's obviously, you know, got quite a few miles on it, it's over 100,000 miles. It's been uh, touched up in a few different areas, but there is original paint on it. It's not actually a color I would have looked for, but uh, like I've said before, I don't chase cars for specific color combinations, but I've grown to love that sort of slightly patinaed, faded silver paint with that tan interior. And other than lowering it and putting a vintage Momo steering wheel on that car, I haven't done anything to it other than drive it quite a bit. And it sounds great, it's got a burble when you back off, you hear the turbo rumble, and it's just, it's a sensory overload. behind the wheel of that car, especially on the freeway and going under tunnels, when you just get on it and then back off and you hear the turbo wastegate pop, hear some rumble, you know, it's sort of a tingly sound. So that is what is great about the silver turbo. And as I said, each one sort of does the same thing slightly different. I actually got a, a little posted on Facebook that a guy had found what he thought was a 76 Turbo back east. So naturally, I always ask for a couple of photos. Well, it 
turned out the 76 turbo he thought was actually a 77 turbo in a very rare ice green metallic color. Also not a color I would originally have chased down, but it must have been a, a Special Wishes custom order color combo of ice green metallic, which in certain lights looks silver, depending on the light, the green really shows through. But what really sets that car off as being very cool, unique, and a little bit special is the green avocado leather interior with green plaid inserts on the seats. But one of the cool things when you first acquire a car, I've bought a lot of cars sight unseen other than a couple of conversations over the phone and uh, as many photos as I can get from the prior owner. My method is always the same, expect the worst and hope for the best. Well, when that car rolled off the trailer, and I bought it pretty quickly, uh, I had it within five days. I always go through the car when I first get it. And one of the great things about Porsches, I often say, is it's a language separate of the driving experience. It's the history that each car brings together through the ownership. And one of the sort of nice finds in that car is when we went through it, it turned out there was a $1977 bill folded up in the ashtray. Well, that dollar bill is still in the car 36 years later. Has the original toolkit, the original jack, and uh, the car had been sat back east uh, in Pennsylvania in an uh, independent shop for a couple of years, and according to their records, the car hadn't driven more than a mile in the past three years. My wife and I decided that would be a great car to drive to Monterey. Well, any Porsche enthusiast knows a car that's sat for a couple of years and done less than a mile is not necessarily the car you take on a road trip straight away. But the interesting part to the story is I needed to put a few miles on the car before we went on an 800 mile road trip and I needed to get it smogged. So I drove it to my buddies in Van Nuys and took it straight to a smog place. Car passed first time, no adjustments. So it was just a great running clean car. Then Karen and I made the road trip to Monterey. Four or five days later, we returned with 800 miles on the car. I put more miles on that in the first two weeks of ownership than I think the car's had on it in the past five years. The interesting thing is the one car out of the four turbos that has got hands down the most thumbs up, views and likes is that Minerva Blue Euro car in the middle. And I think it's a rare color. It's a Swiss delivery car with a white leather interior. That's the way it left the factory. But what really makes that car unique is the color combo with the gold Campagnola rims. You know, it's not something that you see every day. It's certainly something, a color combo that you don't really see hardly ever on a 930 Turbo. I'm keeping all turbos stock other than lowering them and steering wheels. This car I'm keeping bone stock the way it appears to have left the factory. It looks too tall by about two inch, but that is how those turbos work. You know, when you look at original posters back then, by today's standards, it looks really under tired, but you gotta remember, that's how those cars were back in the mid 70s. You know, I've restored and modified and hot rodded and outlawed enough 911s. You know, it's nice to actually have something that is as close to factory spec the way it left the factory 36 years ago as possible. 